Welcome back to another awesome math video from Mathcation. This time we're going to be learning about how to write numbers in scientific notation. As you can see, we have four important things that we need to remember when writing numbers in scientific notation. The first step for writing numbers in scientific notation is that we have to move the decimal point to make a coefficient between the numbers 1 and 10. Just to give you a quick example, let's say I write the number 5,000. All whole numbers have a decimal point at the very end of the number. You would need to move this decimal point to the left to create a number that will be between 1 and 10. So as you can see, if I move the decimal three times to the left here, I would create a coefficient of 5. Moving the decimal leads us to the next two tips that we need to remember when writing numbers in scientific notation. The next tip is that if the decimal point moves to the left, the exponent will be positive on your power of 10. And if the decimal point moves to the right, your exponent will be negative. Numbers written in scientific notation have two parts. They have what's called a coefficient that is being multiplied times a power of 10. And this will be 10 to an exponent. Now this coefficient always has to be in between 1 and 10, which is why we move the decimal point to make a number in between 1 and 10. And then this exponent here on the power of 10 is going to tell you how many times you move the decimal and in what direction. Which leads us to our final tip, and that's that the exponent will be equal to the number of times you move the decimal. So if you move the decimal 5 times, the exponent will be 5. If you move the decimal to the left, it'll be a positive 5. And if you move the decimal to the right, it would be a negative 5. And if you're learning anything right now, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on other awesome math videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get to work and start doing some practice problems on writing numbers in scientific notation. So you can see we come to our first problem. This problem gives us the number 8 million. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to move our decimal point to make a number in between 1 and 10. So we know the decimal is at the end for all whole numbers, so that's where it's going to start. Now our coefficient has to be in between 1 and 10. So I'm going to take this decimal point, I'm going to move it to the left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times so that it's right behind the 8. So we have just one digit to the left of the decimal point. The reason we do that is so that we end up with a coefficient of 8, which is in between the numbers 1 and 10. That is going to be multiplied times a power of 10, so 10 to an exponent. Now, the exponent on the power of 10 is just going to be equal to the number of times we move the decimal. So we moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times, so our exponent is going to be 6. Now, this will be a positive 6 because this decimal point moved to the left. 8 million written in scientific notation is going to be 8 times 10 to the 6th power. Our coefficients in between 1 and 10, and our exponent on the power of 10 is going to adjust for how many times we move the decimal. Moving on to the second problem, this problem gives us a decimal. It is 0.0056. We start with a very, very small number. This is a decimal, so this is less than one. But we're still going to follow the same process. So we're still going to start with the decimal point, which is showing this time. And we're going to move it to a spot that will make a coefficient in between 1 and 10. So we're going to move it to the right one time, two times, three times. And I'm going to stop right here because if I stop right there, it would give us a coefficient of 5.6. So the coefficient will be 5.6, and that's going to be multiplied times a power of 10. And the exponent on the power of 10 is going to be how many times we move the decimal. So we moved it once, twice, three times. So our exponent is going to be 3. But this time we move the decimal point to the right. And when you move it to the right, your exponent is going to be negative. So our exponent is actually going to be negative 3. And our final solution is going to be 5.6 times 10 to the negative third. 5.6 is a coefficient works because it's in between 1 and 10. And then our exponent is negative because the decimal point had to move to the right in order to make a coefficient in between 1 and 10. In the previous problem, it moved to the left, 
so the exponent was positive, but in this problem it moves to the right, so the exponent is negative. Finally getting to our final practice problem, this problem gives us 34,000. So we're going to go ahead and convert this number into scientific notation. And if you remember all whole numbers have a decimal point at the very end, we have to move this decimal to a spot that's going to give us a coefficient in between 1 and 10. So we're going to move it one time, two times, three times, four times. So right here, 3.4. So our coefficient is going to be 3.4 times 10 to an exponent here. So we moved it once, twice, three times, four times. So the exponent will be 4 on the power of 10 and we move the decimal point to the left so it's going to stay a positive 4. So our final solution for 34,000 written in scientific notation is going to be 3.4 times 10 to the fourth. The very last thing I want to say is that it's a very common mistake to think that the number of zeros is equal to the exponent on the power of 10. This exponent is not equal to the number of zeros that you have, it's equal to the number of times you move the decimal. So like in this example, we have three zeros, but the exponent is four. And the exponent is four because we move the decimal four times, and it's not equal to the amount of zeros that we have. So just be aware of that as you work on converting numbers to scientific notation. And if you want to do some more practice problems on writing numbers in scientific notation, go ahead and click this link in the video and you'll be taken to some quick practice questions that will give you a grade and tell you how you did. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video if you got something out of it and drop a comment telling me if this video helped you or if you need help with something else. See ya!